God bless you, beloved. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. I do rejoice and I'm glad in it. I'm grateful for it. This is Bishop Carrington, J. Charles Carrington Jr., Senior Pastor of Life Builders Church. I love God. I love him so much. And I love the opportunities that we have to share the word of God with you. For the next few moments, and I'm not going to be long. I know everybody is on Facebook Live, but I want to appreciate the time that you take to be with us. Amen. And we're not going to hold you on here long, make you glad twice, make you glad we came on, make you glad we not on. <laughs> you can turn us off at any time, but I don't think you want to do that. I think you want to stay with us. I think you want to stick with us. We do have a word from the Lord. Take the time right now to share this broadcast. Come on, share it. Bring somebody in. Amen. For the next moment or so. Hey, Nisha, how are you? I'm still going to get you for leaving me on that ride. I have not forgotten. I love you but I'm going to get you. I'm going to kidnap you, put you on a roller coaster. You'll live. I, I, I declare you'll live. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Wherever you're watching this, we praise God for all the saints of God. The Lord is so faithful. Amen. The Lord is so worthy. In the next moment, we're going to get started with our time together. And beloved, it's going to be a blessing. We're talking about effective ways to eradicate panic from your life. Effective ways to get panic out of your life. You need to get somebody on with this. You need to tell somebody that Life Builders Church Midweek Refuel Group Gas Up is on the air. Come on, tell them now, amen, and bring them on in. Share, share, share with us and let the Lord be glorified and let the blessing of the Lord fall upon us. God is so good. God is so awesome. Let's pray. Father, thank you that this is the day you've made. Thank you that your blessing makes us rich and adds no sorrow whatsoever. Thank you that you're more than enough. You're with us, not against us. Greater are you that's in us than he that's in the world. So, Father, we come before you. Thank you for your presence, your power, your anointing, and your love. Let us hear your word tonight. Let every enemy be scattered. Let fear be dissipated. Lord God, let your glory be manifested. And, Lord, we thank you. We're in this pandemic, but we thank you that as quick as it's come, Lord, as quickly as it's going to leave, and it's going to not continue to destroy and wreak havoc on lives. Father, we plead the blood of Jesus right now over every nation in this world, over every family, and we curse the works of darkness. We come against it by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, this stronghold of canary virus, this stronghold of COVID-19, we pull you down. Jesus, you said in your word that you beheld Satan falling from heaven like lightning. Lord, thank you that, Lord, when you show up and your people agree as on earth, Lord, as it is in heaven, so it is on earth. We agree, Lord God, that an end has come to this canary virus. So, Lord, thank you, coronavirus, I should say, Thank you for your faithfulness. COVID-19 has a name and it has a knee and it must bow. So let your glory rest upon your people tonight. Eradicate panic, eradicate fear in Jesus' name. And we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody hold your Bibles. Let's say together, Lord, I thank you that I have a Bible. It is my personal copy a basic instruction before leaving earth. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm not just a hearer, but I'm also a doer. And my life is so much better because of the word of the living God. Therefore, I declare my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will not be distracted, but I will hear what thus saith the Lord. And as a result of what I hear tonight, Beloved, shout it with me. I'm going to leave here better than I came here in Jesus' name. My God, beloved, I got a word. Effective ways to eradicate the works of panic in your life. Beloved, I am not trying to make you into a robot. God made us fearfully and wonderfully. We have emotions, okay? We have feelings, but as believers, he made us to rule over our feelings and not our feelings to rule over us. If God made our feelings 
to rule over us, then the spirit of fear would dominate. But can I get somebody to declare the word in 2 Timothy that God has not, come on, given us the spirit or the life of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1 7, I believe. Amen. That scripture is so important and powerful because, beloved, that word spirit is small s in that text is denoting the life that we live. So God didn't give us a life of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Let's talk about panic because God didn't give it to us. So effective ways that we're going to eradicate panic. Because things happen in life. Things happen in life. But as believers, God won't have us to panic. He won't have us to panic. Can I read to you the definition of the word panic so we can worship God together? Panic is defined as sudden, uncontrollable fear or anxiety. Sudden or uncontrollable fear and anxiety, often causing, hear this, wildly unthinking behavior, panic, sudden, uncontrollable fear, or anxiety, often causing wildly unthinking behavior. Now, as we look around since this virus has started, there's been a whole lot of panic. <laughs> I remember the stores, you know, uh, how many know there, there's still chickens hatching? How many know there's still trees growing? But we were buying chicken like there would be no more chicken. <laughs> we were buying toilet paper like no more trees were going to grow. When you're in panic, there's sudden uncontrollable fear or anxiety. Come on often causing wildly unthinking behavior, fighting over a, lo a loaf of bread. God have mercy. Grabbing up all the hand sanitizer when soap and water has worked so well for hundreds of years. <laughs> Come on, we can laugh now, but just think about all the panic that we've seen over these last week or two weeks or so. Panic. Here, panic. There, panic everywhere. Everybody panicking. But I want to tell you why panic is not good for believers. Can I talk to you? Why panic is not good for believers. Number one, there are three reasons why it's not good for believers. Number one, God didn't give it to you. God didn't give us panic. Again, like we said in Timothy, he gave us the spirit, the life of power, love, and a sound mind. So anything God don't give you, beloved, is not always beneficial. It's not always in a beneficial thing. You know, God didn't give us panic. God did not give us panic. God did not give us panic, but power, love, and a sound mind. God gave us peace, peace that passes all understanding. So if God didn't give it to you, it's very likely you don't need it. It's very definitely you don't want it. Panic is not good for believers, number two, because it's an opening for the works of the adversary. Panic is an opening for the works of the adversary. When you're in panic, you're opening a door to the enemy to run and to rule your life. When you are in panic, you're opening a door to the devil to run and rule your life, okay? So reason number two why believers don't want to be in panic, God didn't give it to you. Reason number two, because God says and shows us that panic is an opening for the works of the adversary, the works of the devil. But here's reason number three why believers should not want to live in panic. It can act to forfeit your victory in any given situation. Panic can act to forfeit your victory in any given situation. 
Can I give you this little tidbit? Usually the first response is a response that will determine the outcome. Usually the first response is the response that will determine the outcome. Just like a tube of toothpaste, when it's squeezed, you'll know what come out of it. What comes out of you when you're squeezed? What comes out of you in times of panic? Come on. The first response usually determines the outcome. So panic can act to forfeit your victory in any given situation. Are you hearing me? Panic can cause you to forfeit your victory in any given situation. So those are the three reasons why believers should not want to have panic in your life. Number one, God didn't give it to us. Number two, it's an opening for the works of the adversary. And number three, it can act to forfeit your victory in any given situation. Look at the word of God with me. Let's go. Proverbs chapter three. Proverbs chapter three, verse 19 to 26. Proverbs chapter three, verse 19 to 26. Let's go to the word of God, okay? Again, those three reasons why we don't want to live in panic because God didn't give it to us. Number two, it's an opening for the works of the adversary. And number three, it can act to forfeit your victory in any given situation. <clears throat> so what does Proverbs chapter 3, 19 through 26 say? Hear the word. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. By understanding hath he established the heavens. By his knowledge, reading from the King James, the depths are broken up. And the clouds drop down the dew. Hear the text. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Come on. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Then shalt thou walk in the way safely and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. This is the word. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked, when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. The Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Come on, y'all stay with me now. Share, I'm getting ready to get into this, why believers don't need to be in panic. Ain't gonna take long to get this word. Come on. Also look at Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven. Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven. Many of you know this, let me go ahead and declare it. Be careful for nothing, uh, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, God have mercy, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I love the word because if I'm going to do something, I want it to be found in the word so it can bless me and have benefit to my life. So let's talk about how we eradicate the works of panic from our lives. Okay, everybody wants this. So here's way number one. Make the peace of God a practice. Make the peace of God a practice. You don't have to listen to bad news every day. You know the main slogan of the news nowadays is, if it bleeds, it leads. I'm not accusing journalists. I'm not accusing the news. 
but I am declaring that we ought to overindulge in the good news more than we indulge in the bad news. So you got to make the peace of God a practice. Why? Because if all you're feeding on is bad news, you're going to build up the quotient of panic instead of the quotient of peace. So practice the peace of God. Before you respond to something, take a moment to think about it. Every day, I pray, Lord, let me be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. It takes work, but it takes practice, and practice makes permanent. Practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. So you can be practicing bad habits, and you make them permanent when you keep doing them. But you want to practice the peace of God. The peace of God. Make it a practice. Reason number two, how a way number two, how we can eradicate panic from our lives. Know that what you greatly fear will come upon you. Come on. Know that what you greatly fear will come upon you. Job said that. In the book of Job, after he heard the news about his cattle, his livestock, then he got the news about his children. God have mercy. I think in one day or in a short period of time, Job lost everything he had. And the final stroke was he lost his health. What he greatly feared, the Bible says, came upon him. So if you fear something, here's my advice. Keep it to yourself. Don't verbalize it. Don't speak it. And internally work on overcoming your fear. Now, I'm going to testify for one second. I had a fear of heights. So I remember always saying, man, I'm scared of heights. I'm scared of heights. I kept making that confession. I'm scared of heights. And one day when I was in middle school, we took a trip to the Empire State Building years ago. And I remember on top of that Empire State Building observation point, and I'm standing over New York. Lord have mercy. And I began to feel like the building was moving back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And the building wasn't moving as such. It was my fear. So I decided right then, I'm going to break this fear because I was missing out on the sights. So I eased up to the edge. They have a glass protection. I eased up to the edge. And I looked over, and I made myself stand, and my knees started buckling. God have mercy. But I stayed there until I felt comfortable. The building wasn't going down with me on it, and I had to get rid of my fear. So you face your fears. You don't run from them, because what you greatly fear will come upon you. That's how you get rid of panic, okay? Number three. What you eat will become part of you. Don't be laughing at me about my fear. Some of y'all been scared too. <laughs> so reason number, or way number one to, to get rid of uh, uh, panic in your life, to eradicate it, make the peace of God a practice. Number two way, know that you're, what you greatly fear will come upon you. Number three, make what you eat. Know that what you eat will become part of you. If you eat fear, hang around fearful people, always listening to panic and fearful people. Birds of a feather, remember that? Flock together. Folk that are in fear will find other folk that are in fear. And you'll feed off of each other. God have mercy. You'll feed off of each other. With that fear, fear will become panic. Panic will put you in a place, again, that definition. Panic will put you in a place of sudden uncontrollable fear and anxiety, causing wildly unthinking behavior. You can't afford to lose your mind, beloved. Not in these days. You need your whole mind, all of it. So what you eat will become part of you. Stop dining with fear. Stop dining with panic. Watch who you hang around. I'm not saying kick folk to the curb, 
But if all they got to talk about, man, I'm going to get the coronavirus. Man, she coughed around me. Aha, aha. No, man, no, 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 no. Not no coughing without covering your mouth is rude. It is rude, crude, and shouldn't be done. But don't you automatically think that you're going to be in a panic and all the coronavirus going to jump on you or it's going to come on you. My God, don't eat fear. Don't do it. Don't do it. Number four, strengthen your knower. How to eradicate fear out of your life? Strengthen your knower. What do you mean by your knower? I don't say your gut because the Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked. I, I don't, I don't um, solicit anybody, nor do I subscribe to following my heart. My heart can fool me. My heart can make me think somebody loved me and they don't. Mm. Selah. My heart can make me think I love somebody and I don't. <laughs> Come on. The Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. So when I talk about strengthening your knower, I'm talking about having a foundation that's built on the word of God. I don't go with my gut. I go with the word. The knower is the Holy Spirit leading and guiding my life. I am familiar with the Holy Spirit. I am comfortable with the Holy Spirit. He speaks to me, and guess what? He leads and guides me into all truth. So he is my knower. What I don't know, he tells me. What I don't know, he shows me. What I need to know, he lets me know. He leads and guides me into all truth. So to be honest, my knower is the Holy Spirit speaking to me, talking to me. So I have to develop the ear to hear the word. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. So when my foundation is God and the Holy Spirit directs my life, I have the knower. Okay? He is the knower. The Holy Spirit leads and guides into all truth. Somebody say all truth. Come on, help me. Somebody say all truth. So again, ways to eradicate the works of panic from your life. Number one, make the peace of God a practice. Number two, know that what you greatly fear will come upon you. Number three, what you eat will become part of you. Number four, strengthen your knower. Strengthen your knower. Here's number five. Ready? Develop your PPW. Develop your PPW. What in the world are you talking about? First P. Prayer life. You got to keep a prayer life. Lord, if there's ever time people need to pray, it's now. Not praying out of fear, praying out of relationship. Praying out of relationship. I have relationships, so I talk to God. He talks to me. You can't talk to God. God don't talk to people. The devil is a liar. Every time I open up the word, he speaks to me. And when I speak his word, hear his word, I develop an ear for his word so I can hear him talk to me. Come on. So I've got to have a prayer life. Second P, I've got to have praise ability. Oh God, praise gets rid of panic like that. Can I do that again? Praise gets rid of panic like that. I've been in situations where panic had come to overwhelm. Oh God, I know I'm a human being like you. I felt panic. I felt the cold grip of panic come on my life. And beloved, the Lord said, praise me. The Lord said, praise me. The Lord said, praise me. And as I begin to lift my hands and glorify God and pray, oh, let me calm down. As I begin to lift my hands and glorify God, hallelujah, the panic left. 
That's why the scripture said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Can I tell y'all something real quick, real quick? Side note, this was for free. God, hallelujah. David wrote Psalm 34. If you study the life of David, when David was running with the Philistines, because he was running from Saul. You know, everybody feels that sometimes I'm being chased by somebody familiar that's going to hurt me. So sometimes my enemy is my best friend. Mm. So David found himself running with the Philistines and they were planning to attack Judah. They were planning to attack the people of God. And, and, and the Philistines had doubts because they had memory. David was the one that killed Goliath, their champion. They felt like if David had gone to battle with them, he would have reverted back to being a child killer and would have started taking out Philistines left and right. So they brought David before the king and they were better right to kill David and they were about to get rid of him. And David began to say, look, I better come up with something. So the, the Bible teaches that David began to run and scratch the doorposts. And they begin to let slaw come out of his mouth. Don't want to be crude, but I'm speaking the scripture. David began to act unseemly. Now, folk thought he was acting like he was insane. But David was praising God. While they were plotting his death, David was praising. His praise was so crazy that they thought he was crazy. And back in the days when the Bible was written in this context, they thought and there was a rumor or a feeling that if you killed anybody that had a mental issue, then their mental issue would jump on you. So through David's praise, he began to set doubt in the minds of those who would get ready to kill him and said, I ain't touching him because whatever on him going to jump on me. <laughs> and they didn't know that David was praising. Glory, hallelujah. David was blessing God and glorifying God. And, and that's why they didn't kill him and they didn't take him when they were going to fight the Philistines. David wrote Psalm 34 as a testament. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. I love what David say. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Woo, God have mercy. That's one of my favorite songs because I know the meaning behind it. Praise. PPW, prayer life, praise ability. The W, of course, you got to know, is all about worship. I got to develop my worship stance. Because when I worship, all heaven rises up. When I praise, God inhabits my praise. But as I worship, all heaven rises up and joins in with me in a knee bow before the almighty God. Worshippers win. Worshippers win. They don't whine, they win. God have mercy. Ah, Worshippers win. Can I keep from getting so excited? <laughs> Worshippers win. So, so when I become a worshiper, I'm a winner. Because the focus is on God. The worship is unto God. And the glory belongs to him. I rarely see a worshiper go down. I rarely see a praiser be defeated. As a matter of fact, I will declare, I've been young and now I'm getting a little older. Oh, I feel the preacher coming now. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. If I'm a worshiper, if I'm a praiser, if I have a prayer life and develop my PPW, God has a way to come in and to eradicate all panic. Folk are panicking. That's why we need to share this with them. That's why we need to let them know God is our refuge. God is our very present help in trouble. 
God is the strength of our life. If I panic, I forfeit my victory. If I panic, I lose sight of the direction that God wants to give me for my future. When I panic, I give an opening to the enemy to come in and hinder my life. When I panic, my peace seeps out of my life like a balloon with a hole in it. I must be in a place that God is allowed to teach me how to eradicate panic from my life. Mm. I do feel like preaching, but I I, I, I want to behave. So, so, so I need you to understand again how to eradicate panic from your life. Again, make the peace of God a practice, number one. Number two, know that what you greatly fear will come upon you. So don't have no great fears. Face them. Submit them to God. He'll help you. Number three, what you eat will become a part of you. Digest fear, it will become a part of you. Number four, strengthen your knower. Hear the Holy Spirit speak to your life. And number five, develop your PPW, your prayer life, your praise ability, and your worship stance. Beloved, I know that somebody on here right now has received this word in our closing moments. And I know that this word has ministered to your life, life to your life. I just want you to exercise it. The Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You're getting a word today that's going to help you eradicate fear. You're getting a word today that's going to knock that fear out of your life, out of your life, that panic out of your life. So right now, I want to hear clearly I want to bless you completely. And Lord, I want to glorify you. Can I pray for you? Because just in case somebody here is in fear or in panic, or just in case somebody doesn't know Jesus in the pardon of your sin, I want to leave this opportunity hanging and you not give God your heart. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that the people that are listening to me and the people will hear me when this is over. That there's someone that doesn't know you in the pardon of their sin. Father God, you gave your son. Lord Jesus, you gave your life. And you sent your spirit to dwell on the inside. So we cannot have an experience with God upstairs. But God on my heart. The throne of my heart. So Lord, I pray that you will pull the heart that needs you right now to come to you. Let them understand that it's time for the nation to repent. It's time for the people to repent. Your word is still true, that if your people that are called by your name would humble themselves and pray, seek your face, turn from wicked ways, you would hear from heaven. You would forgive our sin and heal our land. Lord, if there's ever time our land needs healing, it's right now, right now, right now. Heal our land, heal our land, heal our land. Help us to repent, that's what it means to turn. Help us to repent from the White House to the smallest house on the block. Every governmental seat in this nation, every governmental seat in this world, let us bow the knee, but let us not individually wait. Let every man, every woman repent, turn back to you, and never leave you again. Lord, this is my prayer. Save somebody tonight. You said that he that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be delivered. You said if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Let somebody confess you today in Jesus' name. Beloved, if you're listening to me and you're here and you're decided 
to give the Lord your heart. Call us at 443-776-0255. 443-776-0255. If you need prayer, if you need somebody to agree with you, join us and we'll call you back. I promise that. Or email us at lbcministry at yahoo.com. Email us at lbcministry at yahoo.com. Or call us and we'll pray for you. Contact us. We're here for you. Well, God bless you. We're going to leave you now. But know that fear ain't going to bring panic in my life. I'm human. I feel things. But I will not fear. The Lord is the light, my light, and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom will I be afraid? It's time to not fear. One more thing before we leave. In case you desire to give, so into Light Builder Church, I didn't come on here to ask you for money. But I want you to know that a giving venue is available to you. It's available through PayPal. You may not be a member of PayPal, but if you access PayPal, you can give easily and securely at lbcministry at yahoo.com. If you go over Yahoo, I actually go on to PayPal, and then you say what you want to give. Earmark Life Builders Church by LBC Ministry at yahoo.com. You can give that way. LBC Ministry at yahoo.com if you're giving by PayPal. Those partners of Light Builders Church, you have the quick link. You want to sow tonight? Take advantage of your quick link and let's be glorified. Somebody on Facebook Live or on Periscope, if you have that quick link, you can put it up and let somebody know it's available. If you have the way to give, let somebody know it's available and God be glorified. All right, we love you. We God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. Stand on the word and know that God can help you eradicate fear from your life. Let's declare together. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his countenance to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. We say together that God dwells in the midst of Light Builders Church. God dwells in the midst of a blessed community. Grace and peace be unto you, everybody, and peace be multiplied. Love you. Don't panic. Don't panic. God bless you. God bless you.